I recently read that the world has crossed 1.5 degrees of warming above the pre-industrial level, the limit set in the Paris Agreement. Then I read that we crossed it several years ago. Then some climate scientists objected. Then I read that the average temperature in 2023 was 1.56 degrees above pre-industrial, but that this doesn't mean we have breached the 1.5 degree threshold. So now what? Have we or have we not breached the threshold of the Paris Agreement? That can't be so hard to answer. I've had a look. Last year in November, the climate scientist Jim Hansen called the Paris goal deader than a doornail and said that anybody who understands the physics knows that. Another climate scientist, Michael Mann, said in response, I've got three degrees in physics and I can tell you that Jim is wrong. In January, a nature comment vaguely said that 1.5 degrees are approaching. In February, headlines declared we had crossed the 1.5 degree threshold. In case you still aren't sufficiently confused, here's how the climate scientist Michael Mann recently tried to explain this. So here you could see the zero. Um, you know, that's not quite the true zero here because there's already been warming. Uh, but on this scale, 1.5 C is that this uh, where my cursor is. Um, the black curve remains below 1.5 C. So this, the baseline here, you can quibble over what the right baseline is. So let's not worry too much about that. If we say that 1970 is sort of where we were was our baseline and we're measuring relative to that, um, then 1.5 C is this, is, is, is this tick mark and this uh, line, this horizontal line here. Um, and so uh, Basically, it's like 2035 or so. If you extrapolate the curve, you use actually a more rigorous baseline. This isn't quite the right zero. If you use the yeah, right... Yeah, isn't, isn't that way off? Isn't I mean, we're talking about late 1800s and you're using 1970. What am I missing here? That's a... Yeah, no, there's been... Yeah, there, there's been... There's like half a degree or something, isn't it? That, how yeah, much let's see if... Know? Let's see if we can. Uh, that means we're already way over... Uh, no, we're, we're not. Um, here, let's get the... Uh, relative this is, to this is rel uh, this is relative to a 19 so this is relative to a 1900 to 2000 baseline right so it's slightly elevated but not hugely well elevated. that's that means 19 you know 50 ish kind of number right yeah. we are at relative to the official late uh, 19th century baseline used by the ipcc right now we're at about 1.3 between 1.3 and 1.4 that the, that's what the numbers yeah. say. And so if, if, moment, if at 1.3 okay, between but. one... So the warming is between 1.3 and 1.4 degrees, but the baseline isn't so important? Well, of course the baseline is important. The baseline is what you compare the current temperature to. For the Paris Agreement, one usually compares the current temperature to the pre-industrial average. That's 1850 to 1900. By the 1970s, we already had more than 0 0.2 degrees of warming. If you add the 0 0.2, Point two to one point three. Now that's more than one point five, or is it? I mean, if one times one equals two, maybe one point three plus zero point two is less than one point five. What do I know? Oh dear! But don't despair. We can figure it out. The first thing you need to know is that some headlines about crossing the one point five degrees limit were about a paper published in Nature Climate Change in February. That paper, however, compared today's temperature to the average in the 18th century, that is much earlier than the usual pre-industrial baseline, which is 1850 to 1900. They were arguing that the warming in the 18th and early 19th century was also partially caused by humans. And the Paris Agreement doesn't specify according to which baseline to calculate the 1.5 degrees. So if you interpret it to refer to the 18th century average, then we have crossed the threshold. That explains part of the disagreement. While I can understand that one can debate what pre-industrial might mean, the 1850 to 1900 has become the norm, so it makes sense to stick with this. Let's therefore ignore this paper. It's just causing confusion. To sort out the confusion that man caused, let's have a look at this figure, which has the right baseline. You see here the black line, that's the data 
data and the yellow shaded area, that's the model projections. And this is 1.5 degrees above the pre-industrial level, so that's the Paris threshold. You see that we have clearly crossed this last year. And this happened according to multiple different data sets, which makes it hard to put it down to some measurement issues. If that's so obvious, why is there even any debate about it? It's because the Paris Agreement doesn't say how the 1.5 degrees of warming are to be calculated. And it's generally acknowledged that if the threshold is broken during only one year, that's not sufficient evidence. This is because the Earth has natural temperature fluctuations on longer durations, most importantly the El Niño Southern Oscillation and so for short. That's a few years long. It's because of fluctuations like this that the IPCC uses a 20-year average. But if you want to calculate a 20-year average for any particular date, you need to have data 10 years to the future. This means even if we cross the 1.5 degree threshold this year, we wouldn't know until 2034. This is why in the Nature comment from January, the authors suggest using what they call a projected 20 years average. They say, let's use 10 years of data from the past, a 10 year projection from the models, and then average that. This also explains, I think, what man was talking about. Let's look at this figure again. The 1.3 degrees warming that he was referring to is probably this projected 20 years average. You can eyeball this here by averaging the black curve. This puts the current average at around 1.3 or so above pre-industrial and we would cross the 1.5 degrees threshold between 2030 and 2035 or so. Though if you look at more precise predictions from the models it might happen as early as 2027 or as late as 2037. So in summary, yes, the 2023 average temperature was more than 1.5 degrees above the pre-industrial level. No, this doesn't mean we have broken the Paris Agreement because the 20 years average is still only 1.3 degrees or so. But yes, Hansen is right, of course, that the Paris goal is deader than a doornail because we'll blast right through it. Really, I can't think of any better example for how much of a mess science communication is than that. While climate scientists try to figure out just what they mean by average temperature, let's talk about something a little more tangible, how you can help nature by joining Planet Wild. Planet Wild is an international organization for environmental protection. They restore ecosystems through membership contributions. Since joining their community last year, I've been thrilled to witness their growth and impact. I know that many of you have already joined, which makes me very happy. Those of you who haven't, let me tell you why you should consider it. Each month, Planet Wild embarks on a new mission, which they document with videos right here on YouTube. Whether it's planting trees, reintroducing animals to forests where they once thrived, or using drones to study blue whales, Planet Wild is making a real difference for nature preservation. In their latest mission, they using advanced tech to find and save a lost frog species in Ecuador. Planet Wild has the potential to make a global impact and you can help make this happen for as little as six dollars a month. Visit Planet Wild through the link in the description or scan the QR code to learn more. If you still need some encouragement, I have a special offer. I'll cover the first month of your subscription if you're among the first 500 to sign up using my code. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.